I I yeah. whittled down my Spotify because my okay. Spotify rap again was like quite embarrassing. My too. <laughs> my yeah. too. The Beatles was my number three. Wow. I, I never. I don't yeah. know a single Beatles song. Really? Like I learned so much about oh, the production of the film. Love that. And like watching it then with him in the room was something that I just felt so like I don't know. I appreciate the film more than I ever have before. Hi guys, welcome back to As Seen In. Hi guys, I'm Tati. I am Kaylee. We talk about all things film, TV, music, entertainment. So if you are interested in that, stick around. Yeah, just realise as well that I'm, I am going to be ill for the next like five weeks of your listening because <laughs> so, we're batch recording. So every time, yeah, as much as I have been ill for three weeks, hopefully when you're watching this, I am slowly getting better. Yeah, but I'm not going to sound better. It's okay. So, you don't sound bad at all. Get used to it, guys. So Today's anyway. episode is my favourite time of year. It is the most exciting time of the year. It's the the one and only Ooh. as seen and wrapped. We're wrapped, baby. This is like the most important wrapped of the year, second to only Spotify wrapped, in my opinion. And that's kind of going to come under. Yeah, under we'll talk about music. This yeah episode. Yeah. So so if so you're unaware of what wrapped is, we basically just go over the year and talk about our faves in all of our different entertainment mm-hmm. categories. Um, we normally segment our episodes, but because this is such a jam-packed one, yeah. um, we can't do that. We're just going to jump straight in. We can't, sorry. So what's what categories did you do? TV, movies. 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 Nice. <laughs> TV, movies, documentaries, for some reason. Okay. There's literally three. Yeah, okay. Um, Theatre and concerts, but I feel yeah. like I spent so much time go through my movies I've missed things in other categories but maybe you'll remind me as we okay, go okay. what did you do oh I did music music, well. music film TV theatre slash live yeah. events books podcasts and then Ooh, any podcasts. experiences and art Yay! things yeah yeah we can just talk about everything that's happened over the last yeah. year oh my god let's get am... straight in yeah go 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 let's start Have... with music Okay, well, that's fine. I'm going to whip out the Spotify because that is like my telltale. I, I whittled down my Spotify because my okay. Spotify rap, again, was like quite embarrassing. Mine, um, <laughs> Mine too. So I'll give you the ones that I'm like semi proud of. Okay, that's cool. So in terms of, I've, I've got three top artists that I wanted to shout out. Okay. The 1975. They Wait, were my- sorry, before you carry on. Did you, you know, you do your YouTube ones at this. Yeah. Did you do the whole thing? Yeah, unfortunately. And you told everyone the truth? Yeah, I had to. I haven't watched that yet. You don't need to because you know what's on there. Yeah, unfortunately. He was like number two. So. Mine was number one. And I even tried to wean off. Number one! I tried to wean off it. I didn't, I, from June onwards, I don't think I even yeah, barely me listened. Yeah, me too, That's why I was really confused because I was like, no, I know I didn't listen that no, much. I know. Anyway. But anyway. Yeah, um, let's go. Carry on. So, carry on with that. So top artist, the 1975, they were my artist of the decade mm. back when mm. they did the thing in 2020. And they've been my top artist ever since. Of course. The band Camino and Mitchell Tenpenny. <laughs> Those are my top three. Okay. Um, okay. If that if that's what we're doing, then I'll go through my top three as well. I'm gonna definitely take off. Yeah. Uh, because that. whilst you're finding that, guys, drop us a comment below because I would love to know your thoughts about separating the art from the artist. Yeah. Because we like, there's a lot of people that I'll like, we'll, we'll both be fans of, and then later down the line they'll do something problematic or it'll yeah. come out that they're like yeah. racist or whatever. Yeah. And we're like, oh. Yeah. So, like, what now? Yeah. What do you think about separating art versus the artist? I think you have to. Yeah, uh, for your own self, like, for you to be able to sleep like, at night. But, like, for the with the greater picture, it's hard. I'm just, right, it is hard because, like, I'd feel guilt every single time I listen to someone that I know has, like, done something problematic. And we've tried, we have tried to like overcome this in ways. It's not like we haven't, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tati burned me a CD of one of our favourite artists that's racist. <laughs> and so that I feel guilt-free listening to because it's like, okay, well, he's not getting any money from it. <laughs> but it's straight up racist. Yeah, no, like I'm not going to even be around the bush. I'm not even going to like try and tip her around it, yeah. right? So that we have tried, but also like so many people listen to Kanye, for example. Yeah. And it's like, at what point? To have what? they stopped? Yeah, I know. And it's like, I know it's, it shouldn't be if you do, I do, yeah, but it I feels <laughs> like if you guys are gonna, he's all of these things. Yeah. And still, like, a lot of people's top artists, Travis as well, like, yeah. it's hardly like these people are in the clear. So, and you can I say don't this, know. 
There is no answer. There is no answer. It's like if... Uh, like, I feel if, bad, yeah? If you want my morals to be tested, they are. Well, they are with everything. No one's a perfect person. Obviously, these things are not... We're not saying, like, hey, forgive them. No, don't, no, don't no, forgive. no, no, don't. That's but why I won't like, even show... Yeah, but anyway... Who it is. We just, just wanted to add some... To, like, add to the discourse. But mm. what do you think? What are your top answers? So, not going to say my top. Number two is 1975. Okay. That will have been because I saw them twice this year. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're great. And they're just, yeah. Actually, yeah, we'll get to that in a sec. The Beatles was my number three. Wow. I, I d- never, I don't yeah. know a single Beatles song. Really? I know, like, the, like I want to hold your hand. That's I think about it. one thing I'll say is you probably know more than you think. Yeah, but like, I'm not going to, okay. I would never in yeah. my life go out of my way to be like, I'm going to listen really? to the Beatles. Yeah, I think it was just like, Culturally, at that specific time when music was coming out, there was a really big divide between race. Oh, so I think yeah, the Beatles valid. were on like the opposite side. I valid. think I could be very wrong, but they have bangers. Of course, we sung them in school. Guys, and stuff. I love the like. I really love the Beatles. This is like, new information. I to thought me. that they were gonna be my number one, but somehow. What's your favorite Beatles song? Oh my god, Yellow Submarine. Oh my god. Yeah, but no, 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 no. That's a banger. Happiness is a warm gun. Yeah, I don't know that one. Is a banger. Golden Slumbers is one of my favorites. Straight into Carry the Weight. One thing I'll say about the Beatles is they love a continuous. Some of their albums are almost like a continuous oh, song. Oh, I love that. Oh, so did they invent God, that? Did know. they invent that? I don't know. Don't get me started. I don't know. People are going to be like, oh my God, no, shut up, okay. you fucking <laughs> dumb bitch. <laughs> All right. I just love the music. I music. love that. Music. <laughs> I there, I have so many top Beatles songs, like I couldn't even pick one. Okay. So, so, I don't know if it's Savoy or Savoy Truffle. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I'm, you know what? I'm actually going to listen to some of these for you. I'll send you my faves. Yeah, send them to me, please. Because um, I need to understand the hype. I mean, not the hype. Obviously, no, I, know I know why I they're you. hyped. But um, like, I only know the like popular classics. Yeah, you would... Re- there were just some... And like, they just... Oh, nothing to me is sounds nicer. Okay. Like, I can just listen to it and I just... Like, it sounds nice. Okay, fair enough. The fair harmonies enough. are stunning. The like... The almost like the vocals and the production value of it being from the 60s sounds nice. Mm, okay. It just, it's not overproduced. It's just like, just like their live stuff is absolutely insane as well. Okay. Oh God, I could talk about it forever. Number four was Annie DeRusso. She's oh, still course, cropping up on my, on my list. And then Taylor was number five, which I still don't know how I feel about that because I feel like I also didn't listen to her as much this year. But there you go. What were your top songs? Um, I'm not going to give you all my top songs because they're not known at all. Okay. But my top, top song was a song called Word to the Trees by an artist called Whatever Mike. This is what I mean. Like, you're okay. not going to know the top songs, but yeah. that is like my favorite, favorite song this year. Two of them were from Mitchell Tenpenny mm-hmm. here. Do you? Do you? Yeah. Those two are just outstanding. Banger. Um, and then there was another one um, from Holvey. So they're okay. just like really random, but okay. um, Yeah. My top song. I don't even know if... I feel like if you've... Not you, but like, if you've listened to any of our episodes in the past, I actually think someone could guess it. Okay. Do you, do you have any guesses of what my top song would be? Oh, it would... E- I would guess it was either like some Meg Maroney one okay, or Meg like Maroney the Okay, Meg Maroney is in the top five. Okay. But no, this is a 1975 song. Okay. Um. Oh, I don't know. 1975 one. Yeah. Is it about you? No. What is it? You ask about the cows wearing okay, my fine. sweater. It's like the most... I don't even know what it is about that song. It's because there are so many double entendres. Yeah. Of like double entendres. Me- entendres, whatever they're called. What the hell I don't did know, you say? Double entendre. I don't know. Entendre. You said French. I said entendre. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I know. It. But like double meanings, if that even is what that means, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, it was like... I just really love the song. Okay. I feel like it was an actually a really heartbreaking love song made into like a not... And we saw it live and it was like... Yeah. When they do the like... in Like they do a bit in the song where they swap the instruments. Yeah. And the vocals for it. Oh! Fair enough. Top song. Second one was If You Go Down, I'm Going Down Too by Kelsey Ballerini. Yeah, I love it. Uh, third was Ray with Oscar winning Tears. Okay, yeah. Hanger. Fourth was Going, Going, Gone by Luke Combs or Combs. I still yeah, don't know you Combs. know. And number five is Tennessee Orange by Meg Murray. Yeah. I'm wearing Tennessee Orange for you. Yeah. And my yeah. top genre was obviously country. My top genre, um, I can't remember my top genre off the top of my head, but country, it was... Uh, contemporary Contemporary country, country was yeah. in there. Okay. Okay. Films. So yeah, music was fun. Oh my God. Okay. I have, I put... F- I have three that I've actually really, really thought about. Okay. Which I was like, yeah, these are my top three. And yeah. then I added in a fourth because I was like, let's give a special mention to that one as well. Okay. 
Um, number these aren't in order. Mm-hmm. Past lives. Mm-hmm. Um, bottoms. Mm-hmm. Rye Lane. Mm-hmm. And across the Spider Verse. Okay. Um, across the Spider Verse because it was just an incredible sequel. Yeah. To Into the Spider Verse, animation was on point. Yeah. Story was just incredible in terms of expanding the multiverse. Obviously, Black Spider Man, so must support. Yeah, of course. Will. Um, yeah, just incredible. Even just the way, like from an editing standpoint, special effects standpoint. All incredible. Yeah. Um, Rye Lane, Black British rom-com. I haven't rom-com. watched that yet, but I really, really need to. Yeah. Black British rom-com. One of the, ro- like, one of the only rom-coms that I've laughed out loud in multiple times. Cinematography was beautiful. The way they shot it in, like, different areas in London. Um, the story was just, it was just, it was just really good. Mm-hmm. Really, really good. And we don't see Black British rom-coms. I can't remember no. the last time I saw a Black British rom-com. So just from no. this, that sheer fact that it stood yeah. out that much. Um, bottoms, just, we spoke about it in the last episode, yeah. so one of our last episodes, so I'm not going to go over that again. Loved it so much. Past Lives, I think I've mentioned that in a previous episode yeah. as well. Cinematography, just the fact that it was, again, a, a unique, diverse story. Original screenplay, I, be- I believe. Um, yeah, and it just felt so painfully real. Mm-hmm. Um, can't, like, can't Can't fault any of them too yeah. much. So there's a big I, Agree. I agree. I haven't seen Rylane or um what was the other one that you said about? I said past lives Rylane across the spider verse bottoms. Okay, oh no, it's, so it's just Rylane that I haven't seen. Okay. Um but I agree with everything you said about the others basically. Like I loved Across Spider Verse, Past Lives and whatever the fuck another one. My memory is <laughs> <today>, Goldfish. <laughs> we <Yeah>. live- <laughs> You literally remember something like yeah. What is wrong wait, with me? What? I'm like, yeah, and now I've got no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. I did actually start to go a little bit extra with this and then I just thought, what are you doing? You've only got a short episode. Yeah. I started to make pie charts. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll have to chuck them up on the on our Instagram. So yeah, follow us I, over I there. did one. I was like, this is like, who, what. Okay, what are your... So it was just a, it was just a couple of stats. I was basically going to like break down because, okay, to start with, I watched 76 films this year. Okay. Um... That's a lot. Eight of which were rewatches. Only? So like things I just, yeah, I don't rewatch, I tell you this. Yeah, you do. I eight, just eight, don't believe and that. Th- and three of them were Hunger Games rewatches. What? So that means, what's eight minus three? Five? I Only w- five things were. Two of them were Barbie rewatches, Fairytopia and Mamadia. What? Take them off. The only other things I rewatched was John Tucker Must Die for some reason. Um, and Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dream Co. I'm wow. pretty sure that was it for I, I rewatch more than I watch for the first time. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Okay, carry on. So yeah, I watched 70... Oh, and Love actually was the last one, which by the way... <sighs> so I went to uh, the Everyman Cinema. They were doing a Q&A with Richard Curtis, yeah. the director of the film, which I told you about. Yeah. But for you guys, I love that man he was so charismatic Aww. such great anecdotes and stories about love actually like i felt like i learned so much about oh, the production of the film and like watching it then with him in the room was something that i just felt so like i don't know i appreciate the film more than i ever have before and i have seen that a good few times before but like it's so good whoa <laughs> whoa if this sounds slightly different that is because we are re-recording our stem <laughs> hello we're midway through the episode this is tatty and kaylee checking in sorry to interrupt the broadcast but we just wanted to let you know if you are watching this episode please leave us a rating over on audio platforms yeah and if you're on audio platforms and you want to see us or any of the things we're talking about that we might be showing on camera we do film so check us out on youtube and our shorts are on tiktok and instagram and if you haven't already definitely make sure you follow us over on socials because we post so much we ask you guys to send in some questions for q and a's and much more much much more anyway back to the episode do you know this is why it's important to make things Mm. because he unfortunately will die one day Mm -hmm. but his work will genuinely live on forever yeah and that impact he's had on you yeah i'm sure so many other people will live on yeah and that feeling like oh i just love what the arts give Mm -hmm. us like about time is is one of my top five favorite films yeah so to to even hear him talk about about time i was like i'm going to die <laughs> he was it's talking giving, about it it's giving, I'm, like, I'm so <laughs> I'm so how seen he's good too golf course in um, <laughs> I love he that. was just so fascinating I could have literally listened to him talk all night mm. there were like things I found out about the film like little cameos from people he was talking about like his mother-in-law had a little cameo so when she came on the screen everyone cheered oh. his son had a little cameo literally two it's seconds so- everyone cheered it was like 
watching it from a completely new perspective and I loved the film anyway. Compared to one, I don't really give a flying shit about Christmas films anyway, but I think it was just so much more than that. And so I don't know why I'm talking about it for so long, but I just thought it would be nice. We, to talk about. we should rattle through. Okay. So my top films then. Guys, I've also made a uh I made a folder in my letterbox of everything I watched. Okay, good. So if you want to know what the twenty, the seventy six I I've watched are, they are all in a thing. Letterboxed username: um, Kaylee C R T R. So like Carter. Mine's <laughs> Tati Kapaya. Perfect. So highlights. Um, I watched. Um, I want uh, Korean cinema is like my favorite genre. I guess if that even counts as a genre, not really. Favorite like overarching. I but just feel like agree. Cat- I, don't I don't know. know. It feels wrong yeah, to call it a genre. It does because it's not a genre. Like, obviously, there's genres within. Yeah, but, but um, I get you. I get you. Park Chan Wook and Bong Joon Ho are my two favorite like okay. directors slash producers. Mm-hmm. And I watched Snowpiercer for the first time this year, which was Bong Joon Ho's English debut. Okay, and it has Chris Evans as the lead. But there's also um, a Korean actor. I can't remember his name. He's in all of your favorite Korean okay. movies. Like he is probably so famous okay. in Korea. Um, and I just really liked it. I like I have faults with it on the end, <coughs> but um, I think it was a really good like dystopian film in general. Mm-hmm. So I watched that for the first time. I watched Scott Pilgrim vs the World for the first time, which is very highly rated within a lot of people. I thought it was okay. I thought I thought it was good. I just I don't care too much for action, so a lot of it was actiony, and I was just like whatever. But some of the filmmaking was really good. Uh, the Talented of Mr. Ripley I saw for the first time this year. Have you watched that? No. Really good. Jude Law and Matt Damon. Oh, I should watch that. Yeah. Um, when it got to Christmas, I was watching Practical Magic. I watched The Craft, both really good, like, witchy, Halloween-y, like, feel-good films. Um, I loved Gifted, which you gave me, which was oh, another Chris Evans one. I love Gifted. Uh, I watched... And I liked Watch Your Number as well. I Did loved you? that. I really loved that. Okay. Such a, like, Good naughty rom-com. Naughty's rom-com. I think it's a tens, but same difference. <coughs> really? I think so. Oh, my God, they looked so young in it. I, but it I'm was not so sure. good. Um, Beautiful Disaster. Literally had to mention. What a disaster that film was. <laughs> what a beautiful disaster. Ghastly, ghastly, uh, ghastly. I loved The Little Mermaid. I really liked Triangle of Sadness. I don't know if you watched that. Uh, I watched How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days for the first time, which I really loved as well. Yeah, I watched that for the first time this year um, too. Arrival and Broker were two of my... like. I've said this before about how like small my favourites are, so to get two new ones this year was a big deal, so those two were really great. And Past Lives, obviously. After Sun I really liked as well. It was very heartbreaking. Um, and yeah, I think that was like kind of my favourites. Before the Before trilogy as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, TV. We don't have lo- long left. Yeah, again, I, I'll make a... I, I, you can't do... All of the f- letterbox don't do the TV shows. It's so annoying. It's I only have... so annoying. Two... My two favourites this year, because I don't watch t- that many TV shows, mm. The Bear and Queen Charlotte. Yeah, both of them. My top two. Same, literally same. Um, What about... I watched 30. 30 shows, shows, apparently. But, like, some of them will just be, like, a new season of a show. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, my favourites... I watched Fresh Meat. I really loved Fresh Meat. Okay. And Feel Good, which is a Mae Martin, um, the comedian. Yeah. Really good. I just was in my Charlotte Ritchie era. She's just a babe. Okay. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, oh, Big Mouth. I watched all seven seasons of Big Mouth and Human Resources, the spinoff, which is like an adult cartoon. Okay. Just really I loved. do... Iosa voice Yeah, in yeah, that. yeah. That's she where she, she like kind of started. I think she wrote on that as well. Like she, she, yeah, she was a writer. Love that. And the same... Oh, and obviously I watched Shameless... Guys, I was actually thinking of doing like a little on my personal account a breakdown of everything I thought about Shameless. If you want to see that, you should do that. You should do that. Let me know. But that was it. I watched. Yeah. I watched the only loads. other thing that I wanted to give a notable mention to was Suits because I mm. watched like seven seasons of that now for the first Fuck. time ever. You this got all year. through. I'm not done yet. There's nine seasons, mm. but um, Megan just left Ooh. at the end of season seven. Okay. So it's like the end for most people. Okay. But um, theater slash live mm. events. Um, my top was a musical, two-person musical called Two Strangers Carry a Cake Across New York. Um, black female lead, so. <laughs> Period. Of course, it's like at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, Parade on Broadway, starring Ben Platt. Um, oh, sorry, Two Strangers was starring Dijon Gift and Sam Tutti. Um, Dirty Dancing, just because we had an experience with that. Like, it was... It was obviously Dirty Dancing is iconic, but I just feel like the stage production of that was not it. 
unfortunately. But it was a funny experience. I loved Dirty Dancing. I don't know what it was. Actually, I do. There was multiple yeah. things. We haven't got time to get into it. But, um, uh, yeah. Twilight in concert. Oh, my God. Was probably, was like, was up there. And that then, was iconic. Yeah. And then I saw the band Camino Live. It was either the band Camino Live or 1975 Live as like the top. But the, that's like my top five. We saw Taylor of 1975 Yeah, exactly. Well. I'd say that's the top five. Okay. But um, yeah. I put... I just, yes, yeah, when well, most of those things you mentioned, I went to apart from the cake one. Yeah. Um, a little life I saw with Kevin. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I just can't even. I haven't got time to get into it. One of the most emotive, graphic, disturbing, but beautiful pieces of photos I've ever seen in my life. Three hours sitting in the front on the stage seating with Kevin was an experience. Uh, James Norton and um, Luke, not Newton, what's his name? What's the other one called? Luke from Bridgerton. Is it not Newton? That's Colin. It's the other one, isn't it? I have no idea. No. I don't know the Bridgerton boys. Luke Thompson. Okay. Luke Thompson and uh, James Norton, amazing leads. Amazing leads. If you ever get the chance to see, because um, they do they do national theatre uh, screenings, mm. and I know that they filmed that, so if you ever see that at your local cinema, don't go if you're under 18 and take tissues, is the two things I'll say. Okay. But definitely see it. Uh, and then the little big things I had to give a shout out to. Oh, we saw that musicals, yeah. just so stunned. Um, and speaking of screen recordings, I recently went to see Skylight, which was a, I think it was 2014 National Theatre like screening of it. It was Carrie Mulligan and Bill Nye, and it was just great. I met Bill Nye. Did yeah. I tell you that? Yeah, yeah there's I a story think, of that on the pod. Yeah, I think I mentioned that a few too many no, but times. It's <laughs> he's such a cool guy. Yeah, he is. And obviously, like, again, I just watched the Love Actually thing, so he's like so cool to me again I'm he just like what legend just such a I was on my birthday I've told you this I don't know why I'm reiterating <laughs> <laughs> but you you can vouch for him being a nice guy he's an amazing guy yeah we met him it's in the Adam Wadsworth guest interview mm-hmm. where I talk about actually it. fun fact about him when I was watching my Richard Curtis Q&A yeah someone asked about Bill Nye or like it came up and he said that he didn't want him for the role he had two other people in mind and for some reason they just were like, okay, we'll get Bill Nye in, whatever. He said that after Bill Nye's um, thing, they fucked off the other two who were much more famous people who he didn't say. He couldn't even remember who they were. Wow. And gave it to him on the spot. Wow, I'm so also, glad Also, there's a, a story he was telling about how Bill Nye actually sung a version of, what is it that he sings in it? It's some Christmas song. Yeah. And he basically made an appearance somewhere. I still can't remember. The story I'm not telling great. Um, to do like a surprise uh performance of it and no one filmed it and he sung with a radio head what it was the most bizarre story ever and he was like there's no there's no trace of this no ever happening but i promise you it happened so that's so Bill. cool yeah whoever was there you guys fuck so lucky um oh. concerts same as you 975 was good oh, i love to go into the long road that was really fun yeah i put that in experiences okay so sorry um yeah <coughs> i saw harry styles that was fun McFly and Busted, which is classic me. Of course. Um, yeah, of next. Course. Um, next. Books. I only have one in here that I haven't even finished yet. Perfect. Icebreaker. What the hell? You didn't finish it? I haven't finished it yet. Because I'm interchanging. <laughs> but like, what? This yeah. is my first experience with a book where it's like, sex in a book? Mm. That describe like, how are you writing this? Yeah. I, like, from the cover, I was like, oh, this is cute. Yeah. Cute little rom-com. So cute. And it just isn't that. And I haven't finished yeah. it yet because I feel uncomfy reading it. But I'm determined to finish it because Hilarious. I don't want to make a habit of starting things and not Hilarious. finishing them. Yeah. But yeah, that's my only one. I'm reading the creative act at the moment, okay, but I nice. don't think I can include that. Um, I'm reading the Starless Sea at the moment. I'm really enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very like abstract and strange and I love it. I read, I'm in the middle of also reading Fortuna Sworn, which is another fantasy series and Fourth Wick, but I'm really behind. And I also read on Kindle this year, a Freedom McFadden, I think it was called The Housemaid or something. That was good. Okay. But yeah. yeah. Um, um we read some more. I've been lacking, slacking. <laughs> Podcasts. Oz. Oz. Was my number two. <laughs> <laughs> Oz was my number three. Mine was so embarrassing, my number one. Mine was even more embarrassing, okay, I you can tell me guarantee. First. Is it Diary of a CEO? Well, that's not the embarrassing one. Oh. So Diary of a CEO was my number one on Spotify. I watch podcasts though, yeah. so that's not an accurate yeah. representation. But um, my number two was Call Her Daddy. And I've listened to like two episodes max. Sorry. I know. How was As Seen In not on there higher? Because I don't listen to As Seen In on, our, on Spotify. I watch us. You need to. That's how we get the money. 
Okay. That's <laughs> how so we get the streams, girl. That's <laughs> how street. we get the three pound a month. Um, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, but my actual top favorite okay. podcasts are The Basement Yard, mm-hmm. The 505 Podcast, mm-hmm. Don't Trip, <laughs> Diary of a CEO, Don't, Don't trip. trip, Diary of a CEO, and As Seen It. Yeah, of course. Um, my number one on Spotify was that. Um, a Court of Thorns and Roses one that I spoke of about. Of course. Because when you listen to them, you have to listen to it through and it's a lot of hours. Yeah. Um, then it was As Seen in number two. As and should. yeah, I love The Basement Yard. I've watched a lot of that this year on YouTube. Yeah. Um, that's the thing. Yeah. I feel like I'm a watcher. Yeah, that's podcasts. the thing. I love watching too. But guys, also stream because as I said, that's how we get. Yeah. That's how we get the minute amount of ad revenue. <laughs> so do that. I need um, to listen to more podcasts. Do you, Yeah. Do you have any others that you're mm-hmm. like hard? Yeah. I, I think it's, I don't have many because when I listen to a podcast, I'm like a weekly listener. Yeah. So it's hard to have many yeah. that you're always tuning yeah, into. Yeah, there's literally not any. But um, yeah, Call Her Daddy isn't up there, unfortunately. No. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I could talk about that for a while, but I won't. <laughs> okay. Experiences mm-hmm. slash art. Um, experiences, I put the Long Road Festival. Mm-hmm. The diner in New York. Oh, Stardust. Stardust diner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was so good. The ballet. Yeah. Slash the opera. Just yeah. our experience at the Royal Opera House. Um, and then in terms of art, I put the MoMA in New York mm-hmm. and the National Portrait Gallery reopened. Okay. Yeah. Um, agree. Because most of those things I was there. Yeah. In the Nashville... No, oh, yeah. it has to be on my rap just because of how funny it was. Like, why was Charles Aston up in my grill? <laughs> up in your grill so much. He was right there. That was the funniest thing ever. It was so um, hilarious. I think, honestly, so many things. Like, I've actually had so much fun this year. It's been great. A great year so, for the So, so fun. A great year for experiences. So, so fun. We've done a lot. Like, We've, we have actually we done have, a lot. We have, and I hope that next year is just as jam-packed, honestly. It's going to be even better. Like, this is, we haven't even scratched the surface. We're trying to... We're not going to put it out there. Oh, chicken ramen we should have mentioned. That was... Oh, oh yeah, no, we're going to talk about that. In, we can talk about that in New Year. Like New Year New yeah, Year, facts, 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 facts. But facts. That, was a, that was a good fun wrap. Okay, well, guys, what oh, was your... one more thing. I'm so oh, sorry. Okay. You need to watch the Twin Flames documentary. Escaping okay. Twin Flames. Oh, it's, you had a documentary section, Yeah, right? it was... I've watched a documentary in North Korea. Two different separate documentaries on these this Twin Flames universe. One was on Amazon Prime, one was on Netflix. I think they're both worth watching. They are, it's nuts, it's about a cult. It's, it's like, it's a current cult, still okay. literally in operation. Oh. Um, and like past members have come out and said all this shit. It is fucking wild. And everyone should watch it. Start with the Netflix one, then watch the Amazon Prime one. Okay, interesting. So please, I need to talk to someone. Guys, yeah. leave us a comment, leave us um a suggestion. What were your top films, top TV shows, top artists, top theater shows, whatever it is of 2023? Um, we'll catch you next year on that yeah. scene. Oh my god, this is the end of the year. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Well, see you next year. Bye. Happy Christmas. <laughs>